Your unique story. Our global audience. Global One Media. Welcome, everyone, to Global One Media's Stocks to Watch series, our exclusive one-on-one -on -one discussions with company executives sharing insights ultimately to help investors make informed decisions. I'm your host, Ashley Barry, and we're thrilled you're joining us. Today, Andrew Kegel is here, CEO and co-founder of Tokens.com, along with Josh Doner, Chief NFT Officer. The publicly listed company provides investors with a simple and secure way to invest in cryptocurrency. They're listed on the CBOE exchange in Canada as COIN, the Frankfurt Stock Exchange as 76M, and the OTCQB in the U.S. as Smurf. Andrew, Josh, welcome. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Ash. So, Josh, you are one of the early adopters of NFTs. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your story and what attracted you about NFTs from the very beginning when there weren't a lot of people paying attention. Yeah, so back in 2017, it was among the first 100 or so wallets to buy uh, CryptoPunks, which ended up being the first NFTs on Ethereum. And really quickly, the backstory behind Punks was there's two engineers that worked at Google Labs. They created this 10,000 collection, put it on Ethereum, built a custom smart contract, really one of the first Web3 applications to ever exist. Uh, and they're noted also for creating the Android avatar. So the little green Android dude you see, they created that. And so a lot of their really early kind of uh, work is in, in big tech and some of the technology we have on our phones today. And the, you know, the project did two, three billion dollars of volume in uh, 2020, 2021 and became a, a global phenomenon and really launched uh, what we consider NFTs today and inspired NBA to you know, sell $800 million worth of uh, digital collectibles very successfully in 2020. So uh, they've definitely left their mark on, on the internet and the space. Certainly incredible foresight there, Josh. Andrew, you know, you're also very much interested in NFTs. Tell us about token strategy when it comes to NFTs and about the assets specifically you're focused on right now. Sure. So I brought in Josh uh, a couple of years ago to help us because I know he's been a pioneer in the space, uh, a guy who truly understands what NFTs are about. And now he is sort of our, our lead person in the gaming space uh, and runs Hulk Labs, which is our gaming studio. For us, the way we sort of perceive NFTs is it initially started as this thing where people wanted to own them as a, a way almost of showing status. You could own certain NFTs and they would establish you because people would understand their worth as having a certain amount of status. How they've evolved, I think, over the last couple of years is to establish ownership. There's actually a real tool there for NFTs that's going to be quite valuable to people in the future. And that is to establish where something was purchased, its uh, purchase history on the blockchain, and its validity in a sense, which is like, if you have something, you can actually see where it came from and the ownership. So as we sort of look at using NFTs, we've been using them in things like we create virtual stores, for example, for DKNY. And the NFTs were really given away there as a way of getting people to perform certain actions. And then the NFTs enable you to have certain rights. So for example, it might give you a discount at the store. It might get you access to a certain part of the internet that they're holding for special people. So there's lots of interesting things that we can do with NFTs beyond just, hey, I own this uh, graphic or this figure, which also has value. It could be very rare, but this is a way of getting people to perform and act in ways that are very similar to like a loyalty program. Mm, okay. You know, Andrew, I really like how you called Josh a pioneer in this space. I also would say certainly an ambassador. Uh, Josh, maybe you can share with us your knowledge of the key trends in that space and and really how they impact your company. Yeah. So to zoom back, punks were dropped on July of 2017. Uh, so six years ago. And for the first couple of years, really nothing happened. Uh, there was another project called CryptoKitties that came along a few months after. It was the first example of the Ethereum blockchain being clogged up uh, for transactions because everyone was tripping over each other to trade these digital cats. And so it's mm -hmm. kind of opened the world's idea of like, wow, you can trade these digital items and have this marketplace uh, that is outside what we know Crypto4, which is the token side of, of things. So it really gave a use case for this technology. 
And then long came OpenSea. And then there's this period of time where not a lot happened until the NBA took over and really like, hey, we have a specific use case. We're going to take our um, our video IP. We're going to bring it onto the blockchain. And they did $800 million in volume. And they took a clip, a 7% clip of every single one of those transactions. And more importantly, every single sequential transaction that happened after that. And the music industry, the film industry, the gaming industry, every industry that touches digital IP were awakened to this potential of, wow, here's a new way that we can store our, our IP and give ownership rights to people for that. And we can then also programmatically take a, a clip of every single transaction. And to them, that is gold. They love that. And so now what we've seen is large brands come into the space to use this technology, Starbucks, Nike, et cetera, and really um, you know, kind of use it as a new engagement method, like Andrew mentioned, for the consumers. Here's a great example. So what Nike did with Dasush is they said, we're going to create NFTs of our shoes because what was happening is there's groups called Artifact Studios that were creating these digital shoes, selling them for $3,000 outside of Nike's control. And so Nike said, we're just going to acquire the entire studio. We're going to create digital shoes. We have this mm. brand called Dot Swoosh. And what happens is you have this NFT in your wallet, and now you can enable it on EA's uh, EA Sports franchise uh, in, let's say, FIFA. And now your FIFA player is wearing the shoes you own over on Nike Dot Swoosh. And hey, I'm going to Fortnite, connect my wallet or connect up my account. Now my player in Fortnite is wearing my digital sneakers. So this is happening at the highest level of brands today. It's being used as a great new uh, medium to engage Gen Alpha, as Andrew will probably allude to. And it's, uh, um, yeah, it's a pretty exciting marketplace. Yeah, it's really cool. You know, you mentioned the gaming industry. So, so let's talk about the gaming unit at Hulk Labs and what your work is right now there. Yeah, so the first year of Hulk, what we did is really learn the different games and mechanics that are in this ecosystem. And so we ran a player network where we uh, provided capital to players. They played games out there. This is really the um, the guild model that Axie Infinity had really pioneered. And so we had recreated a version of that. And we had 400 players playing that played 180,000 matches. And so we were earning revenue basically from all the winnings of those players. And we were able to, you know, in one click control that money coming back into uh, mm -hmm. our wallets and to also delegate wallets to new players. And uh, what we've done since then is pivoted into being more. Just, 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 to, just to jump in for one second, Ashley, I think that, that that's really cool. So what we were doing is you had these games that are called play to earn games, where when you play them, you could earn tokens that could then be resold into the marketplace for money. So you could essentially earn a living from playing a game. What we decided to do is essentially hire people from all over the world to play the games for us. And we were earning 20%. So we would provide them access to the game and we would pay them a commission based on how well they played the game. And then we would take profits from that. And I think that's a pretty interesting, unique model which is really how Hulk Labs started. And I'll turn it back over to Josh to talk about the cool things that we're doing at Hulk now. Yeah, that's a, a solid uh, simplification of what we were doing. And uh, so now we've taken that core technology and we're saying, how can we scale this even further? So on the data side, we're putting it into large gaming communities. So now users will be able to go to a dashboard and see something similar to CoinMarketCap, but specific for gaming and gamers. And then on the uh, wallet side, we have this technology that is able to give wallets to players with assets preloaded. We think there's a lot of value there. Mm -hmm. um, and then also creating a game of our own that uses some of these mechanics that we've learned from doing a lot of this work. Um, so yeah, it's a, a pretty exciting time at Hulk. Yeah, I'd, I'd say absolutely. And really innovative. Uh, Andrew, I appreciate you explaining that kind of breaking it down for our viewers. You know, moving forward, what is the, the future sort of strategy about the gaming unit? Sure. So gaming is actually the largest part of the entertainment business. To put it in perspective, gaming, video gaming is bigger than film. It's bigger than music. The estimates are that there's about 3 billion gamers in the world. Hmm. It's a huge number. And for us, we look at this and say, this gaming group is starting to migrate into what I would call crypto gaming or Web3 gaming. Citibank 
projects that there's going to be 100 million gamers in this sector by 2025. Today, there really aren't a lot of players in the space. It's in its infancy. And what we're trying to do is sort of position ourselves to be at the forefront of that by number one, creating these gaming dashboards, by doing these analytics, but number two, creating our own game. And I think that's an exciting thing where we're saying, okay, we have this massive opportunity in front of us. We've become experts in the area by analyzing all these games. And really I tasked Josh, as I said, you know what, Josh, we have all this information. Let's create our own game. Let's do our own thing and put our mark in the industry because right now there's not a lot of people doing it. And again, it, not just by Citibank's estimates, but by estimates by every investment bank on the planet, this is going to be just a huge, massive area. Yeah. Yes. And if I actually may add to Andrew, uh, so during COVID, there was $70 billion that was sold in in-game microtransactions in the top five free-to-play games in, in the Web2 version. There was then an additional $80 billion in uh, NFTs and digital collectibles being traded. So combined, this market or economy, if you'd like to call it, that is you know $160 billion large. It's it's incredible. And that's just for in-game microtransactions. So you know, looking to the future, there's a really large role that we are playing, uh, you know, kind of tracking those transactions, seeing the data allowing users to play those items and play those uh, Web3 games. And, and, to, and to also, you know, actually to put it in perspective, we view this as beyond gaming. So gaming is really like the entry point. You think about Zalphas and I've talked, I think I've mentioned before, I have three kids in the Zalpha range. Mm -hmm. They come home and the way they socialize, the way they want to shop and the, interact with their friends is they meet in these metaverse domains. You know, for example, Roblox, I've probably said this before, is approaching 70 million daily users, majority of which are under the age of 15. 70 million and growing, like that's a huge amount of people. We believe that gaming is sort of like the entry point into this and to accessing these alphas. But as we work with our clients, it is okay, developing games, but also providing them some consultation services. Like how do you get in there and access these people? How do we provide branded games for you? And we're right now in conversations with several corporations to provide branded games that they can use to advertise themselves, to market who they are. Because in the future, it's not just gonna be gaming, it's gonna be financial services, it's gonna be education, it's gonna be the delivery of all kinds of services and shopping as well. And so we're, again, we're using gaming as our entry point because that's where that Zalpha age group is right now. Yeah. But over time, once we're able to capture them, it's going to be all about e-commerce. And, and really so helpful for you, Andrew, when you come home, you see this. It must be such an inspiration uh, for you moving forward for the company. I mean, you really have, as I said earlier, this incredible foresight, you know, and, and Josh being this, the pioneer of, the, of, of some of this. I mean, it's it really is quite fascinating. Um, any message you'd like to convey, both of you to shareholders, both current and, of course, potential ones, folks that are watching, you know, even possibly some Zelfas, you never know. Yeah, well, you know, I would say a lot of people are concerned about that. They, they say, well, we don't want our kids being you know, completely locked into computers. And certainly the, the more, you know, the Zalpha generation is completely digital, right? They've, from the day they were born, they've been faced with, you know, yeah. electronics. But what I would say is it's, it's really a replacement. This generation doesn't watch TV. Like they think watching TV is like a weird thing. They're like, dad, what are you doing? This thing has, you know, why are you watching something with commercials? You can just stream it. Um, but I would say it's really, it's replacing television time and it's a way for them to interact. It's very natural for them. And, you know, I, I'd say that there's not really reasons for concern if for people who are concerned, people are still playing outside and doing normal activities. I think this is really just really a replacement for television. And Josh, I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, no, totally. And it even goes a step further where it's like, if they spend this time in this new digital world, they should own part of that world and they should see part of the mm. upside of it. And so this technology enables that. And for the last 20 years of the internet, Google, Facebook, Netflix have owned the internet. They own 90% of the traffic of the internet and they accrue all that value. And so now we're seeing a layer to the internet where value can be created outside of their control and it can be owned by people and players that use these applications. And that's really exciting. 
Yeah, excellent points in these exciting times for both of you. Andrew Kegel, co-founder and CEO of Tokens.com, and Josh Doner, Chief NFT Officer. What a pleasure it was to speak with both of you today. Really excited to see what you have in store for us in the near future. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks. Thanks.